Hey guys, it's Will from EDM Tips. Today I want to share with you 18 of the most powerful Ableton drum rack techniques you can use to get the most from your productions. Make sure you watch to the end if you want to see the ones that I use in every single project I start. So let's get straight to it. So first let's look at simply loading in a drum rack. If you create a MIDI channel in Ableton Live, either by going up to the menu or holding Command, Shift and T if you're using Mac, then go into your instruments and you can just drag in a drum rack. Boom. I use this device for every track, it's super powerful, so here's how you use it. Now there are lots of drum kits already provided with Ableton that you can just drag in and start using straight away. And we can see here that each one is loaded on a different pad. Or the way I personally prefer to use the drum rack is to load in my own single shot samples. And you do that simply by browsing to your samples within the Ableton browser. And then you can just drag and drop separate samples onto each different pad and then you're going to be able to play them. But that's simple and basic. So first power technique I want to show you is using send and return. So we can see here I've got some drums loaded into different pads. And if I want to use, for example, the same reverb on multiple elements, I don't want to have to create a separate reverb for each one of these different chains. So that's when I'm going to use a return reverb. Now you've got two options when it comes to the drum rack. You can either send and return to your global auxiliary channels, which aren't just within the drum rack, for your entire project, or you can create a dedicated return within the drum rack itself. So I'm gonna show you both of those techniques and describe the benefits of each. So if we press this routing button here and this R button here for return, we've got this area that pops up. Now, if we want to create a return chain within the drum rack, we can just hit that button there and then we can drop an, our effect here. So I'm gonna drop in a reverb and I'm gonna turn it to 100% wet so we don't double up the dry signal when we send these separate drums out to this reverb. And you have to make sure this S button is pressed and that's sends. And you can close down the R button and the routing and this send control now shows. So if we want to send a little bit of that rim shot out to the reverb, we can do that. We can also send some of that shaker out. Differing amounts to our taste. So let's just listen to that. some of the tambourine and it's all going to our return reverb here. Now that's useful because if you put an effect after this entire drum rack it's going to also affect this reverb as well. So perhaps you want to compress your drums, perhaps you want to filter out the high end and that's all going to be done to this return reverb as well. Now the second technique is as I said to send out to your global auxiliary channels. So let's just delete this one, right click, create return chain and then I'm going to open up this routing button and it, then I'm going to select from this drop down menu one of the auxiliary channels I've already set up. So I'm going to choose this auxiliary room reverb one and then I'm going to create a second one and I'm going to choose this hall reverb which is the second auxiliary channel in my project. So we can close down the routing and the R button again so we've just got the two send controls but if we do this and then start putting effect after our drum rack this has already been sent out to this auxiliary channel. So for example, if we put a filter on these drums, we're still gonna be able to hear what's been sent out to this reverb. So we can hear that still. Because it's being sent out before it hits the filter. Now the benefit of this is you can have multiple elements of your mix share these same effects. And that can be quite good to gel everything together and make it sound like it's coming from one space. Now the other thing I like to do when it comes to send and returns within drum rack is actually automate these send controls. For example, if we want this rim shot to send out to the hall reverb every few shots, like that, it can be a nice effect to add more interest to your track. In that case, I'm going to go show automation in new lane, and then I would program it in within the arrangement view. Like so. Second tip I wanna show you is easily layering samples. So if we've got this rim shot, if we want to layer that up with a clap, an easy way we can do that within the drum rack is to find a clap sound. Let's go drum hit, claps. Choose a clap we like, drag that into a new pad. And we want to have that triggered by the same note within our drum rack. So we can see here, this is our rim shot. And what we want to do is open up this routing button. 
and we can see this receive and play and choke controls. We'll get to these other ones a bit later, but at the moment we can see that this is C1. That's what that is assigned to. So if we go down to our clap and simply choose C1, every time that C1 note is being hit, it's going to actually play both sounds at the same time. As we can hear now. And if we delete this note, it's going to play neither of them. And then we can just mix this clap in to be the right volume. Next tip I want to show you is adjusting the timing because sometimes you might want your claps to not all play at exactly the same time. Now unfortunately you can't bring this forwards by a few milliseconds but what you can do is push one of them back a few milliseconds and the way you do that is by using a delay unit. So I'm just going to load a delay over our clap. I'm going to put it to 100% wet. I'm going to take the feedback right down. I'll take off the synchronization and then we are going to just make this a very short millisecond delay which is going to play slightly after our rim shot. So we can hear it just gives it a bit more of a human feel by just delaying the clap by a few milliseconds and you can tighten it up if you want. Just a little tip there. Next I want to touch upon drum grouping and that's where you can combine a couple of drum sounds into one group so you can process them as one. So I'm just going to grab these two tom drum sounds these two. I'm going to command G to group them together and then we can see they've been put into their own drum rack within a drum rack. I'm just going to rename this by pressing command and R and calling this Toms in capital letters so I know it's a group and we can recolor that as well to be show up for us that it's a group. Now we can see we've got these two Tom drums within that group. Now the beauty of that is if I want to process them both together I could put, for example, a reverb over both of them. So let's just pop one here at the end of that chain. It's important I don't put it here because that would just be affecting this one tom drum or here, which would just be affecting the other tom drum. It's important I put it at the end of the chain as I have done, so it's going to affect both. So now let's listen to these tom drums. Let's just loop this little bit. and I can make this louder, this chain. So now these are being processed together as one. We can pan them left or right. So that's drum grouping, very useful indeed. Now I'm gonna show you a trick as to how you can randomize samples, again, to add some more human feeling. So I'm gonna create a MIDI channel. I'm gonna drag in a new drum rack and I want the claps to be randomized as we're playing this through. And you can see I've just loaded in three separate drum sounds for claps that I want to randomize. So what I'm gonna do is just program them in in a new MIDI channel by pressing Command, Shift and M, or Control, Shift and M if you're using Windows. And let's program one in on every other kick. And we're just gonna repeat that. So at the moment, all three of these drums will sound at the same time, like so. But we just want to play one at a time and have it randomized each time. So this is how you do it. Within the MIDI effects, you choose arpeggiator. We'll pop that down there. And all you need to do is make sure that this rate is a multiple of the frequency that these hit at. So at the moment, we've got one eighth, which is absolutely fine because these are hitting one four. And then if we choose random other from the style drop down menu, it's just going to play one clap at once, but it's going to randomize each time. So let's have a look at that. And that's quite good for adding randomization. It means we don't have to program it in. It's all done automatically. So if we play that with our other drums. It's just adding a little bit more interest and variation. Which takes me on to the next tip, panning randomization. So we've already got the different samples playing. Now we want to randomize how they're panned left and right. So if we open up the chains here, we can see what's going on. At the moment, we can pan them manually like so. But as I said, we want to randomize this. So let's put them all back to center. And the first sample, we are going to hit controls and then just increase this random panning amount here. 
So let's put it up to 50%, which is the amount that's going to randomly pan. And then this goes on to our next tip as well, and that's how you can make a change on one of your pads and have it copied to the other ones. Rather than clicking in each one and making that change manually, we can just right click and then we can hit copy value to siblings. And that works for any value or any parameter that you decide to edit. And if we go to the other ones, we can see that's been done to all of them now. That's a fantastic tip. And now let's listen to the panning randomization. So we might think, okay, that's a bit much. I'm gonna take this down to 20%, copy to all siblings. And now they're just panning a little bit left and right. Next tip I want to show you is a great way to add more power and punch to your drums and that's by layering the same drum one octave above which is going to add more punch, it's going to add more high frequencies. So if we've got this military kind of drum that we're going to use for an intro for example, let's just solo that. If we want to add more punch to that the way that we could do that is before the actual sampler or simpler within the chain we can just drag one of these MIDI effects chords in front we need to make sure that our simpler is set to classic mode and that we've got at least two voices playing so it's going to play a chord at that point now we can shift this first shift up by 12 semitones which is an octave and then we can just mix in that one octave above and this is the kind of effect that we can get So now we can hear the higher octave as well. So that's a great way to add more punch to your drums. Now I've got another eight even more powerful tips for you, but if you've got any questions on these so far, do please let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can answer them and clear things up. Okay, so next tip I'm gonna show you is using choke groups. And this is particularly useful when you want particular drum sound to cut off the end of another drum sound. So for example, if you were using a hi-hat in a real drum kit, you could only have it playing closed or open. So if you're playing the open hat and you wanted to play a closed one, that closed one would necessarily cut off the end of the open one. So the the way that we can do that within Ableton's drum rack is if we open up this routing button here again and I've got a closed hat for example and an open hat this choke group here is where you select it so as long as they're both in the same group so let's choose group one and group one for both the closed hat and the open hat now if we play one of these it's going to cut off the previous one so let's program in an example of how that might work we are going to go on to 16ths and we are going to go like so. Let's just increase the volume with the velocity. So if we do this, in fact, we don't even need to program the whole thing because there's some release on the sound. You can hear. If we just put another one really quickly after this open hat, you can hear that it actually cuts off that open hat. So let's program this in and we're just going to loop this little bit and turn off the other drums so we can really hear what's happening. Um, here we go. And if we take these out, we'll hear these hats will last a lot longer. And that's a great way to keep your drums tight and to stop having too much build up in your drums. Next tip I want to show you is a simple one, but really important, especially when it comes to hi-hats and to tom drums, and that's tuning the drums. So if we go into our tom drums again, let's just turn off the reverb at the moment so we can hear them. You can hear they're hitting different notes. Now, if we go into the simpler itself, we can just use this transpose button to make sure they're hitting the right note for our track so we can see here i've actually tuned it up one entire octave and getting your tom drums tuned to the root of your track is really important because there's a lot of low frequency in there and it can just make things gel together so much better so let's listen to it when they're not tuned in i'm just going to randomly change the transposing of the tom drums and play it with our bass It 
just doesn't work nearly as well. So using this transpose control for things like shakers, hi-hats and tom drums is fantastic. But what happens if you want to actually have an increasing pitch bend, like for example with a snare intro at the end of a bar? Well, if you were to do it the normal way with an Ableton, that is to go to your envelopes and then choose MIDI control pitch bend, it's going to bend up all of the drums. which probably isn't what you want. So if you are using drum rack, the easiest thing to do is just create a separate one completely where you can have your snare rolls on and then you can use the smooth pitch bend. If you don't want to do that and you want to do it actually within one drum rack, you'll have to use the transpose feature. So if we go to our snares and we just program in a little drum roll like so. So we have our drum roll now. If we want that to go up in pitch, we're going to have to automate the transpose feature within that single sound. So we can go into controls, we can right click on transpose, and we can show automation in new lane. And that's going to allow us to just automate that one sound. I have to open it up a bit so we can see what's going on. It's going to default to zero, and then we can just program in that pitch bend, like so. But it's worth noting it's only going to be transposing it up a semitone each time instead of a really smooth pitch curve. But it's usually fine for drums. Now when it comes to presets and defaults, we already touched on at the beginning of this tutorial that all of the different drum presets and default racks that we have that we can just drag in and start using right away. But you can also create your own custom ones and save those as defaults. For example, this is my own personal default drum rack and we can see it's already got certain pads loaded in and named as well as certain effects. So we've got a clap snare EQ where we're just taking out the low end. We've got one for the open hats as well, taking out the low end, and then another for the 16th hats with a sidechain compressor already put in. Now I know every time I load up the drum rack, this is what I'm gonna use every time. We can see we've also got the auxiliary reverb already rooted in and it just saves so much time. And the easy thing to do, or the simple thing to do, is once you've created a drum rack that you like, you just hit this button here, and then you can call it Will's Default Drums or Drum Rack. And now every time I load that in, it's gonna look exactly like this. And if you want to make it the default so that when you load in any drum rack whatsoever, you can right click and you can press save as default preset. And it's gonna load it in every time, which can save minutes every time you start a project. If at some point you decide that you don't want that to be the default, you'll have to go into the defaults within your file system and just delete it. And it's gonna return it to the initial factory preset. Now, these are a couple of techniques I use in every single project that I use. And it's a way of hot swap so you can preview different sounds whilst you're listening to everything that already exists to try and find the best sound. So the first I want to show you is the pad hot swap. So if we click on one of the sounds, we can see this little button pops up here and that allows us to hot swap different pads into place and preview them whilst we're listening to everything else. So let's try that. Let's just loop our drums, hit hot swap. and it's gonna load in different sounds until we find one that we think sounds pretty good. Right, that sounds pretty cool. But if we want to tweak this a bit to give it a slightly smoother attack, every time we hot swap this, it's gonna go back to the default settings. So the second hot swap tool, and the one I personally use the most, is to actually go within the simpler itself and hot swap there instead of in the pad, because then all of the sample settings you've done, if you've done any transposing, if you've done any volume, all of that's saved, and it's just the sample itself that switches out. So we can hit it there, and now try some other sounds. And I'm having to press return each time to load them in, but we can see we've already still got those same settings for the attack. And I literally will do that for every drum sound in every track I make, making sure that I find the best possible sound and I'll make notes of maybe five or six, and then I'll A, B test them against each other, whittling out the weaker sound each time until I'm left with the absolute best drum sound that I can choose for that track. So this penultimate technique is almost like the last two, but on steroids, and that allows you to actually use one of these macro knobs to really quickly just preview loads of different sounds. So the way that you do that is you open up the macro control here by pressing this button, and we need to load a sampler, not a simpler, 
onto one of our cells. So let's load this sampler on here onto C2. And then what we want to do is drag up to 128 of one particular drum sound. So I'm going to do this with snares, but you could also do this for cat cats. <laughs> you could also do this for kicks or shakers or any other sound. So let's grab a bunch of snares, 128 of them, like so. And we are just going to drag them into this sampler. Now what we want to do is press this zone button. Make sure this select button is hit. And then we want to right click and distribute ranges equally. And then we just need to right click here, map to macro one, sample selector, and we can just call this snares. And now when we program a snare in, let's just close down the zone and program one of these snares in. Like so. Let's just copy that. Now we can just move this knob and just preview a lot of different ones really quickly. Now that's a super power tip, but there's one more that I want to show you which I find so useful when it comes to drum racks. You don't just have to use them for drums. I love drum rack for other samples as well. So I've got one here that I just drag in to use for vinyl sounds, if I want some vinyl sounds in the background of my track. And I can very quickly just find one that's going to work and program that in. I also have one for vocal hits as well which I love to use for little rhythmic effects. So there you have it guys, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on my most powerful drum rack techniques, but the most important part of any electronic track at least is the kick drum. Now getting the wrong kick drum can seriously ruin a track and so often a student of mine will come to me with a track that just changing the kick drum makes all the difference, it just pulls the track together. So if you want to find out how to pick the perfect kick drum to underpin your track, you can check that video there. I hope you enjoyed this, if you did consider subscribing to my channel and thank you so much for watching, catch you over at the next video. Yeah.